the career and the work that you've done, being in the business, having success, is idealized by a lot of people. Totally, yeah. And um, so you can think, uh, you know, I remember one of the first things when I first got into the business, um, especially on camera, someone gave me some advice, never complain. Mm. Never get, never be caught complaining. And I thought, yeah. oh, that's true. Um, once we had the author Frank McCord on, who's this you know great Irish writer who had uh, who wrote Angela's Ashes, and it, he talks about his terrible upbringing, you know, and literally being impoverished. And he he'd written these amazing works about his really tough childhood in 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 Ireland in like the nineteen thirties and forties. And I remembered we we had him on the show, and the show's over, and we had had just a really tough, long string of shows mm. in a row. And I walked out, and I'm pulling my tie off, and I went, "Oh my god, man, this this gig sometimes just really gets to me." And f- I forgot who I was talking to. Mm. I'm talking to Frank McCourt, the guy who is famous for writing about his impoverished childhood in Ireland. And he went, well, I bet there's a lot of other feckin' people who'd be willing to do it if you'd want to give it up, Conan. And I'm like, no, 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 Mr. McCourt. No, I'm, I'm, I know, I'm, I'm so happy that I, you know, because I immediately, I, you know, here I am with my makeup on, yeah, right. wearing a, a suit jacket, and I've just chatted and done some banter and been very highly compensated for it. And I said, oh, man. This job sometimes, ah, you feel like you're a little fucking tired of your job, are you? You know, like, and I thought, Jesus Christ. But the times I've been around, especially uh, single camera, I'm, 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 and I had a little bit of experience with it a couple of months ago, uh, and I was stunned at how how much how hard everybody's working yeah really it, and, i mean the and, hours are long and stuff yeah, yeah. And, and not just the act i mean the actors are there but then the crew. anyone the crew the, the people there. the people in makeup are there so th- the actors are showing up at like five and six in the morning but the the people in hair and makeup are showing up at four thirty in the morning to get yeah. everything ready for them and they're packing up after the actors go mm-hmm. home i just was blown away yeah. and now i look at um these single camera shows and movies very differently, I think. Wait a minute. Every shot I'm seeing, there were it was done 55 different ways. <laughs> yeah, and it took five months for like four minutes of footage with some of these big ones, you know? I mean, it, it's, it's a behemoth enterprise, and it really is like, it's an amazing thing to be a part of. And I, I you know, I agree with you about this. Uh, complaining is in, in, in in this industry is it's many things and it's definitely a bad look um mm-hmm. i i th- i think the you know the only time that i'm um forthcoming or, or or transparent about 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 the process is is more of like as a witness to help people to not idealize it in yeah. a way that yeah. is sort of like i don't know it just it just leads to more and more fantasy you know yes. what i mean it's like i personally love what I do and I'm also constantly taking stock of like it's the you know the 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 culture of the industry it's just yeah it's like really really intense I think the a good way to put it because this is you're bringing up a good point which is to uh in my opinion um you need to love it Mm. you need to love it and I think uh and I've talked about this a bunch on this podcast but I meet younger people who Sometimes they're interested in what I'm doing because they love comedy, and I think, great, go for it. Are you willing to, like, give it your absolute all? Yeah, (laughs) and I I, I always say, are you you willing to feed, like, remove your leg and feed it into a wood chipper to to do this because you love it that much? And uh, if the answer is yes, then you have your answer. I do think uh, it gets complicated, especially in this influencer world we live in now where – people are looking for what they have idealized is the gravy that comes yeah. with it and they're not thinking about is this really are you are you up for the work and also yeah. are you up for an incredible amount of disappointment are you up for humiliation and rejection rejection constant rejection um and uh are you are you up for yeah people liking you and being excited to see you and also people not liking you mm-hmm. and and letting you know it and if you are then great but uh, you have to be open to all of that. And to me, that's about really loving it. And I think that's how people survive. I think you and I both know people who've 
got into this because they thought, if I get famous, this will cure, Mm. this will be the salve and the ointment that will cure my insecurities, the fact that I was a nerd, the fact that no one, the, the, the girl I like didn't pay attention to me, this will cure all of those wounds. Mm. And I know people that felt that way, got famous, it didn't, that didn't happen, it doesn't fix, if you've got a hole inside you, you still have that hole, it is and a- they become enraged about yeah. it. They're furious. Yeah. They're rich and recognizable, and they're really angry, because yeah. it didn't fix the thing that they wanted to fix. And it, yeah, and at that point, it's like there's so. At that point, the hill is really tall. Yeah, <laughs> the peak is very far away. Because yeah, I mean, also you know, again, in, in, and I and I hope in this context is clear. Like, not at all complaining about it. It's 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 like bearing witness to this reality. We know that like, fame and wealth. How many more documentaries about are the world's biggest icons and most talented people who? How many more do we need to see? Yeah. who've fallen and collapsed like yeah. you know yeah. like like dead stars or whatever it's re- it's you know it's like it's again it just helps us understand the forces at work like let's certainly never be ungrateful and then like yeah. let's not paper over how it's uh i think particularly the fame aspect which that is a like a is like a kind of a modern human phenomenon and that is a really interesting thing to be witness to and to mm-hmm. to learn about human psychology in that way I, I i find that kind of um whether i want it to or not it's it's endlessly fascinating you know and 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 um it's its own it's its own kind of hall of mirrors you can't look too long into it but it's like if you develop a discipline with peering in and 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 kind of gleaning some things and then Stepping away, you know. That, I I think it's uh, it's really I I do I I I love what I do, and I can continue to love the things that I'm learning, even as I uh, am very. I try to be all the time very clear about like how. You know, uh, I'm trying to. I don't want to say something sensational. How you know? It's like everything you were just saying. I mean, just everything you were saying. Well, how about th- how about this? How about I, I'll say that everything has a cost. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, it's uh, there. You there's always a cost. Yeah. So and and there's a cost to everything. And so you just need to be reasonable, and you need to see both sides of it and and weigh them. Yeah. And sometimes if the cost gets too high, um, you need to track that as mm-hmm. well. And uh, I I think the big antidote, something you've done, I've done, is. Find your partner, have kids. That is mm. huge. It and really then, is. And then invest in that because yeah. um, uh, the rest of it will come and go. But yeah. um, my wife assures me she will never leave me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I make her renew that vow every day. Uh, okay. Yeah. Is it's that same time bomb? Let's you think she thinks she's on? You think she's on the way out? <laughs> no. All it takes is one one face hold. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm watching way too many Gossip Girls these days. My like daughter covering did, her ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's also you know in this modern era, like the idea of taking a woman's face and holding and holding it still. Yeah. While you say things like "I'm going to hold your face right here," so that you have to, so I can mansplain something yeah, to you. Yeah, I mm-hmm. wouldn't. I wouldn't like that. I has, think has Tack ever held Tack your face? Has never held my face. He's never been like you know. What I about mean, this? What about the? What about the? the oh, yeah. oh, 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 the little that. I do that to the myself. Fingers in the- <laughs> Is that weird? That's an. It's, uh, it's a, a little like a. It's a little little auto erotic. Yeah. It's feline. Do you make sort that of. face when you do it? I do this. Yeah, <laughs> I. I make kind of a weird pouting face as I stroke my own chin. That's yeah, weird. That got me through fifth, sixth, seventh grade. Okay. <laughs> Did you do c- it in class? Like sometimes oh, the teacher on. would say, "Conan, stop that," and I'd go. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do oh, that noise, sound. though? It's a, it's a po- well, oh. I guess it's a podcast. 